It's a sweet spot, which is a weekly discussion of sometimes silly, but every once in a while pretty serious things. And yeah, well, sometimes the, the, the real world and the world of art and culture collide in unpleasant ways. Particularly recently after, after Sandy Hook, I, th there were two reflexes, right? Right. Why are there 300 million guns in this right. country? And then immediately, often led by the gun lobby. What about all of these violent movies? You can't shoot me. You're a cop. Not anymore. What about all the TV Pretty shows? Bloody. And of course, video games, which as the newest of these media and the one that's the most popular with young people and young men, um, tends to be focused on as maybe the scapegoat. And it's our job as media people to say, look, all speech is good. Right. If you limit no speech, censorship. Ne yep. Never, never, ever. But there's this big empty space where we're suddenly not supposed to be talking about the things that we kind of, or at least I feel in my gut, maybe we should be talking about. I mean, there is an enormous amount of violence in, in, in popular culture. And it, it, it's, you know, you, you, you can't necessarily say it's causally related to these things, but are there cultural experiences or play experiences or fantasy experiences that are so powerful that they can by themselves begin to erode that boundary? Um, for or, people or whose sense of it is already I mean, if fragile. you talk about the Aurora shooter, he dressed as the Joker. Right, right. Well, you and know, so many of these images are there for, for, for um, unstable people to kind of to, to, to fasten onto and to, and to draw from. What I was thinking about lately is 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 violence that veers too close to what is real. Mm -hmm. Like there was a huge debate about Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, and people were up in arms about um, uh, some significant scenes of torture. Yeah. Yeah. in that film, right? Yeah, although people weren't objecting to how violent it was, but exactly that it was purporting to represent something that actually happened. And violence probably did, and probably did. And by probably the way. did. And claiming or implying um, that it might have been effective. That's what the kind of violence in movies that I have a high regard for because yes. what it do is it's kicking off a discussion that, that takes place outside of the movie house where it's close enough to the truth where people say, is this really what our country is, right. is doing it? And, and the thing about those scenes also, which is different from a, a movie like, like Django, where the moral economy of the violence is always clear. You know who the and, good and guy the, is. And the shooter games. And the shooter They're games. trying to kill right. you. They're trying to kill you, so you're going to kill them. And also, your identification as a viewer or a player is always clear. In those torture scenes, it's very unstable, like where your identification is supposed to be. There's a right. person who's suffer suffering horribly, another person who's inflicting the pain on them, but it's not telling you, okay, you're in this position. You're, you're the, you know, the, the, the good guy putting it to the bad guy, or you're the helpless innocent who's being hurt. You're kind of just in this room and you don't know and, and this is very much, I think, intentional on, on Catherine Bigelow's part and part of her skill as a director is she puts you in there and you're not sure where you are or what you're supposed to be thinking. I am bad news. I'm not your friend. I'm not gonna help you. I'm gonna break you. Any questions? What I worry about is probably what the gun people worry about is once we start having this conversation and once we are open to a discussion about what is appropriate speech and what the consequences right. of, of free speech are, that maybe they're going to end up going after movies like that. Well, that's the thing, and I think that it always happens that, that, that if, you, if you have some kind of censorship or some kind of regulation, um, you will go after the most difficult um, the most challenging, maybe the most artistically important um, products and, 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 and pieces of art um, rather than the, 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 the most popular. It's impossible, because Who, who's going to get to decide? Who's going to watch this stuff and say, no, you can't do that? Um, yes, you, you can do that. Um, yeah, and the, the question of where it stops, I'm old enough to remember that when there was a, a spike in homicides in, in, in the 60s, one of the things that was mentioned comic books. Yeah, right. And I, I remember when it was gangster rap. You gangster, know? Yeah, gangster rap is killing people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
And if you go, I mean, if you go back into the 19th century, it was it was it was uh, novels that were creating, you know, antisocial behavior among among young men. The the the, the vogue for sensationalist fiction in between hard covers, you know, that was the danger. So, I mean, I don't I don't know what the answer is. But. Well, okay, so maybe maybe if everything's going to end up on the table, a couple things that are going to end up on the table. The movies we watch, the TV shows we love, the games we like to play. Maybe it's time to have that discussion.